Welcome to this tutorial on the Saitsev rule in organic chemistry. The Saitsev rule, also known as Zaitsev's rule, helps us predict which alkene will predominate in elimination reactions, such as E1 or E2 reactions. Let's start with a simple statement of the Saitsev rule. In an elimination reaction, the more substituted alkene, that is, the alkene with more alkyl groups attached to the carbon-carbon double bond, is formed preferentially as the major product. But why? To understand this, we need to look at how elimination reactions work and why more substituted alkenes are more stable. Let's look at what happens during an elimination reaction. In elimination reactions like E1 or E2, we remove a leaving group such as a halogen atom and a hydrogen from adjacent carbons, creating a carbon-carbon double bond. The key consideration is which hydrogen gets removed. The hydrogen must be on a carbon adjacent to the one with the leaving group. We call this the beta position. Now let's illustrate the Saitsev rule with a specific example, 2-bromobutane. In 2-bromobutane, we have a bromine attached to the second carbon. This is our leaving group. Looking at the beta positions, we have option 1, the hydrogen on carbon 1, which would give us 1-butene as a product. Option 2, the hydrogen on carbon 3, which would give us 2-butene. According to the Saitsev rule, 2-butene should be the major product because it has the more substituted double bond, with two methyl groups attached, instead of just one. But why are more substituted alkenes more stable? There are two major factors that contribute to this stability, hyperconjugation and the inductive effect. First, hyperconjugation. This is an interaction where electron density from the sigma bonds of adjacent carbon-hydrogen bonds can be donated into the pi bond of the double bond. More alkyl groups mean more opportunities for hyperconjugation, which leads to greater stability. This overlap between the sigma CH bond orbitals and the pi bond orbitals disperses electron density, making the molecule more stable. Second, there's the inductive effect. Alkyl groups are weak electron donors that can stabilize the electron density of the double bond through this effect. Let's look at how the Saitsev rule applies in the context of the E2 mechanism. In an E2 elimination, the base removes a beta hydrogen while the leaving group departs simultaneously. The reaction requires an anti-periplanar geometry, meaning the hydrogen and the leaving group must be positioned 180 degrees away from each other. When multiple beta hydrogens are available, the base preferentially removes the one that leads to the most substituted alkene, following the Saitsev rule. While the Saitsev rule is generally reliable, there are some important exceptions to be aware of. One major exception involves bulky bases like potassium terbutoxide. These bulky bases often give what's called the Hoffman product, the less substituted alkene. This happens because it's sterically easier for these large bases to abstract a less hindered proton. Another exception occurs when conjugation is possible, formation of a conjugated alkene. Even if it's slightly less substituted, can be favored due to the additional stability from conjugation. Finally, ring constraints in cyclic compounds can sometimes lead to preferential formation of the less substituted alkene if it helps relieve ring strain. Let's summarize what we've learned about the Saitsev rule. The Saitsev rule predicts that elimination reactions will predominantly form the more substituted alkene due to its greater stability. This stability comes from hyperconjugation and inductive effects. However, there are important exceptions with bulky bases, conjugated systems, and cyclic compounds. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you understand how the Saitsev rule works and why more substituted alkenes are usually the major products in elimination reactions.